This is Woe Madeley 2022 pandemic style. And I gotta say, it's adapted pretty well. The crowds are reduced, but still buzzing. The lineup is missing the usual contingent of international acts, but still delivers. And the festival's associate director is tired and emotional, but still standing or sitting if you wanna be picky. Because of the complications of pandemic travel, the rules have been changing on a constant basis. And to be honest, it's been exhausting to keep up, but here we are. Recent COVID limitations notwithstanding, Womadelaide has become quite a fixture on the Australian arts calendar. Over the last decade, the event has regularly attracted more than 90,000 people over its four days, offering a multitude of artists from over 30 countries, along with some very familiar local acts. I wonder what she bought it for. I mean, I see it as one of the biggest like most important festivals that we have. It's kind of mind blowing every year and stuff I haven't heard of, stuff that I kind of then go on to discover. And being something of a Womadelaide regular myself, I agree that the always eclectic lineups offer something unique within the Australian festival circuit. But to get a deeper sense of what's been achieved here, you've got to go all the way back to the early 90s. And who better to take us there than this lady? People have broader musical tastes nowadays. They just don't want to hear um, Australian music only or only independent music. They want to hear everything. They want. Jesselyn Hall hosted Triple J's first foray into what was then known as world music, and her show was aptly titled. You're listening to World Music Show with me, Jesselyn Hall, in the mega. Jesselyn Hall, it is so wonderful to be joining you across Zoom. I'm here at Womadelaide. We're celebrating 30 years. Take us right back. You were doing this radio show during a time where the popularity revolved around bands like Jebediah and Silverchair, You Am I. So I guess within that, where could you actually go to see a full lineup of world music artists? Ah, yes. Mm, <laughs> that's right. You couldn't really. It wasn't until Woe Adelaide that it all came together and it was like stepping out of 2D and into 3D, into IMAX. We stepped out, we stepped up and it just exploded. I'm wondering how open Australian audiences were to this category of music. I think they were very open. We knew that this was a multicultural um, society. So therefore, we were ready to step up. We just needed the gate opening. We just needed a chink and we could step through it. It's make or break time for the Adelaide Festival. WOMAD, World Music Adelaide, is its biggest gamble. Three days of 30 of the world's most diverse musical groups in concerts and workshops are exploring the sights and sounds of ancient and modern culture and music. It was part of Rob Brookman's 1992 Adelaide Festival. It was never planned to happen more than once. But actually, over the weekend, a whole number of people were kind of encouraging Rob in particular, saying, look, this is a great idea. And he got up on stage and in a moment said, we'll be back. And, and then we were kind of committed to somehow make this work. And Annette Tripodi has also been involved since those early days. Tell me how it evolved over time. What did you observe? In the beginning, there was probably a bit of, that's just a thing in Adelaide. A lot of the East Coast media ignored the festival, but after a while, we started to notice that the kind of music that we were programming was crossing over into other festivals. And so festivals that had tended to focus on blues and call themselves that, or folk festivals, suddenly started to branch out a little more and work with us um, to share artists, which definitely wasn't the case in the first place. While Warm Adelaide has worked hard to bring us genuine global diversity on stage, I was curious about the often loaded term that's sometimes associated with the festival, world music. We've never actually used that term. We never say 
we're a world music festival. I think world music is almost an antiquated term now because it goes back several decades. Originally, it was really a marketing term to find a place in record stores. Well, I've become friends with the term a long time ago. I mean, you have to, I mean, it's just a category, really. You don't have to silo it off and go, that's, you know, that's a specific category. Yeah. This is probably about 400 million categories in the one festival. Take away the world music title and just enjoy it that we're all here. Look, I, I still love the term world music. People say, well, it's global music or ethnic music, but I just like, I like, I like the term the world. Well, like or loathe the term world music, one thing that seemed to unite everyone here was a feeling of belonging. And that sense of inclusion probably explains why the event has earned such a loyal following and how it has helped broaden the country's musical appetite. Basically, I was born to play WOMAD. I mean, there's no other festival that would, would take me on, really. I mean, I've had to dabble into classical and jazz music, but this is the one where you feel at home. We've had a shift in our demographics, we've had more recognition than we've ever had. And I think 30 years is a milestone for, for any festival to not only survive but thrive. <laughs>